Um, yeah, show you my trades. I mean, no losing trades. No losing trades. See? Short, long, short, no losing trades, no slippage, no loss ticks. You know, I'm not saying that I, I trade perfect every day. No, I don't. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is Future Trading with Mike, and today, once again, we're looking at the E Mini S&P 500 futures. It is currently uh, about 10:30 now. I'm a little late trading this morning, um, but let's go ahead and get started. Um, as always, I'd like to start off and thank those who have been currently um, following the channel, guys. I appreciate that. Um, those who have already subscribed to the channel, which means you've already hit that subscribe button for me, and hopefully, you turn on the, the uh, uh, post notification little bell icon. So, if you haven't done that and you're a subscriber, Please take the time to go ahead and click on that bell, that little post notification, um, that bell icon. Make sure that you never miss one of the uploads. I know you you subscribe to the, to the channel for a reason, to follow the content, um, and that will ensure that you never miss any of the content or any videos that I post to the channel. If your first time subscribing to the channel or watching one of the videos, I take, they take that back. I'm sorry. First time actually watching one of the videos, guys. Uh, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me if you don't mind. Um, what I do is I'm just a price action trader, um, you know, following the e mini S&P 500. This is the primarily, this is the market, my go-to market that I, like, I actually like to trade. This is the ES Futures, um, which the S&P 500 is the actual derivative of the S&P 500. I'm sorry about that. So if you don't mind, go ahead and hit that red button and join the team. Um, I'm a price action trader. Basically, I just, you know, I follow price action. I look for setups in the market based on uh, price pulling back to areas of uh, support and resistance. Um, and not just support and resistance. I like to see price actually move. If I'm looking at an area of resistance, you know, sitting above where price is moving up to, I'm looking to, uh, price to pull back into that swing or that area of resistance and take a trade from that area of supply and vice versa with, uh, price moving to the downside, hitting up against an area of support, pulling back into that area of support where there's demand setting in that. So, uh, that's what I do, guys. I'm just a price action trader. Um, you know, some people don't believe that you can actually trade just pure price action without any indicators in your chart. And yes, you can. It is the foundation, the first thing that, you know, if you could trade from a naked chart with nothing on it, meaning no volume profile, you know, looking at Kimmel to Delta, any EMAs or SMAs, uh, VWAP or anything else in your chart, and you can just purely trade price action, then uh, if you can, if you can, you know, conquer that, then you are definitely, definitely well on your way to definitely um, becoming a successful trader. So... All the indicators do, some of the tools do like the volume profile, and if you use the cumulative delta, which I have loaded to the chart, but I, I probably don't really, um, I, I glance at it because it is a reflection of, um, you know, the orders that you see, or the amount of buying or selling that comes into the market, so I have it there, and um, someone had uh, messaged me about it, and I said, okay, I'll leave it on the chart, you know, maybe it helps them out at, while I'm trading, and explanation of things. So, uh, let's go ahead and get to the video. Enough, um, um, you know, talking right now. Let's go ahead and take, because I'm already late looking at the market. Uh, we'll look at the 60-minute chart, because we have to have, like I always do, I like to form some type of direction um, in the market. And we can see that over the last few days, I need to get rid of these lines here. But I'm, I'll do that after I record the video. Um because then the chart's going to want to reload. So, okay. Anyway, so let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, if I was to look at things right now, we can see price bounced from this uh, area down here. Um, so the market is bounced uh, early part of uh, yesterday, at, at, the, at the open of the session yesterday, during the Globex session overnight, and started pushing up to the upside here. Price is... Um, this is only a one hour chart now, guys. So this is the volume off of a one hour chart you see to the right hand side. Price is pushing up higher. Uh, breaking above, uh, we cleared 40, which 40 was sitting right at this high volume area pretty much. So there's a possibility that price could actually bounce off, come, pull back, bounce off this high volume area here, and then push higher, testing some areas of higher volume. Now this is low volume right here. We do have a couple little high volume nodes, uh, but price could actually, price could pull back, bounce here, and then possibly pull push up to maybe 75 area and then maybe clear that and push a little higher so um right now let's see here let's go on on the let's take a look at the uh, 60 minute chart in detail yes we do have an area of resistance right here uh price push the downside pull back and pulling lower so right now we are at resistance an area where price can reject 
Um, but let's see. Let's see his price is going to, you know, uh, it clear this high volume area. So if it pulls back, it could bounce and then push higher and maybe get some rejection, like I said, off of the 75 area. It's hard to say at this point. Um, but as a trader, you just kind of kind of speculate what price may actually do. Um, but first and foremost, you want to form a direction by looking at a higher time frame. Now, let's be mindful because, um, let me move this. It always gives me a fit right here. Right, uh, this um, the webcam image. Um, be mindful because we do at let's see, yes, at this point, let's take a look here. Let me see something here. Price pushing up mm -hmm. right here. Uh, we can mark this area here when price push down here and pull back. We have an area right here where price can, like I said, around the 75 area, price could. If price comes back up to this area here, it can balance. It's a small. It's an area of, of supply off of the uh, one-hour chart. Okay, is what I'm trying to say. So, but we also, you know, this is if price gets back up to this area here. Now we are in an area of resistance already, so price can reject out of this area and push lower. Um, if you look at the one-hour, we're making you know lower lows and lower highs, and like I said, it bounced um, after coming down and, and, and testing a low. Uh, looks like the low may have been from. We didn't come all the way down to the actual low, but we got, you know, um, we traced back into this area down here. So we are testing. That was from the 24th. Okay. So price bounced there and has, you know, decided to push higher, come back and pushing back up, testing this high volume area here. So uh, price continues to push higher, testing this area right here with supplies that then, you know, it could fold and, and push back down to the downside. So right now, we're, like I said, look at it. We're pulling back to that area of around you know, this high volume area right here and 40, 40 pivot levels right there. So that's a hidden pivot area. Okay. So right now my bias would be, um, well, to be honest with you, because we are actually, um, pulling back into this area of resistance and currently uh, bouncing or rejecting this area. And we're at a high volume area. It's hard to say because price can actually bounce off this high volume area and push higher. Okay. So I would possibly be looking for a loan to push through this low volume area. Up to about 75 if price could do that you know this is long term now i'm not saying i'll stay in the trade that long i'm just telling you because this is the es there's nothing as that it's not the dow where they race once they you know make their move the yes it's, it's more of a thicker market but uh, i like trading it because a lot of people have a hard time trading the ES because they don't have the patience to trade it um because of the movement in it it's not a lot of you know price action movement uh to say like the uh the dow and nasdaq um even the wrestle but right now i would possibly maybe look for it interest to go long but right now i could also look for interest to go short because we are in resistance right now so it just depends uh I'll, I'll take the opportunities as i see them um and looking at the 12 range chart now so now that i'm gonna look at the 12 range okay okay and i see price let's see here 12 range let's see following price here's that high volume area right here um it's building volume Like I told you guys, on that uh, one hour, you saw the area of volume. We have volume right here on the 12 range as well, okay? So, let's see. Um, okay, so price pushed up here, made a high here, pull back from the swing to the upside. Pulling back into an area of uh, pretty much support right now, so... Um, Mm. I would be oh, okay see here we go right here yeah be careful so I'm gonna wait patiently just kind of look to see what price is trying to do here we could we could push lower but it's hitting that area there. It bounced right off of 41 and a half. So we made a little low right here. So we reject it up here at 57 and a half. Push down, pull back, made a little low. Let's see if we break that area. Okay, let's see. Let's see what price is going to do here. Price is pulled back to that area. Like I said, that volume there.
Short. Okay. Come back down. Come on. There we go. All right. Price is more than likely it's going to try to come down to at least probably around the 36 and a half. Uh, 36 and a half. It could bounce here. Um, area, you know, area support right here in this swing to the upside right here. Okay. It could come down to 36 and a half, 37. Like I said, look at it. We're at 38 and a half. 38 right there. A point away. 37 and a half. Look at there. See what I said? Okay. So scalp for a little entry there. Taking a short. I saw price breaking. Um, when price pushed up here, saw it breaking this low right here. Okay. So it pulled, pulled, it, uh, pushed down, pull back, broke this little low here. Also breaking structure here on the pullback. Okay. I'm, I'm going long once I see, um, price break, uh, below. Pretty much right, break, break right below this high volume area right here. So when that red candle closed right here, breaking below the high volume area, um, and breaking below pretty much the area of 43, 45 and a half. I'm short, okay. And price came down to 37 and a quarter so far. All right. So that's the first little entry today. Quick little scalp to the downside. Okay. Sorry about that. See, look at it. Come on down. 36 and a half. It hit exactly where I said it was going to hit, okay? Now, that's the thing about traders. Like, um, a lot of people who claim they could trade, you know, I'm sitting here and telling you what price is going to go to when I see it break, all right? A lot of people can't, they, they can't tell you those type of things because they have no idea what prices may come down to. Price is going to, I always give you guys the, I, the, I pinpoint the area where price is going to come to before it rejects. I'm not saying that, you know, um, I have a crystal ball and I can read exactly what price is going to do next. I'm just telling you where more than likely 95% of the time what prices are actually going to do once it's, once I get into a trade where the first stop is going to be, I should say. Okay. So I just picking up a quick 14 ticks on the uh, ES. All right. Now I am a scalper guys. I tell you that today is February 22nd. I'm not a position style trader or a swing trader. If you're looking for someone that does those type things and, um, you know, gets into a trade and likes to, to trade and run and play out, whatever the case is. Uh, I'm a day trader, so I like to scalp, especially with the ES. With the ES, you almost have to be a scalper because the ES is a lot tougher to trade than the NASDAQ and the Dow in a sense um, because it likes to, it's a thick market. So if you got the volumes a lot higher than the, than the NASDAQ or the Dow, say for instance, because, and when you have that, being such a thick market, it will, it will push and pull a lot more. And that's why you don't have big swings or big movements on the ES because it'll give a little bit, it'll push a little bit, pull back, push a little bit, pull back. So it's a lot trickier market to trade, but to me, it's more rewarding because of the tick value is higher. You know, the NASDAQ is $5 a tick. With the ES, it's $12.50 a tick. So it's, you know, so it's almost three times the amount per tick. So to me, I just, I find it more rewarding because I can make a, make some profit. And get out. I can trade the NASDAQ. I can trade any futures market. I love trading the equities. I love trading the indices. I love really trading, you know, any any one in particular. I just I just found interest in the in the ES, okay? So let's see what the market is doing. Um and this is not your, your cup of tea trading the ES and my trading style doesn't work for you, then hey, we we you know we all have our opinions. We all have our differences. So, you know, maybe this is not the channel for you. But um, my style of trading works for me, and and it's not it's not complex. It's very simplistic, and I think people like simplistic, and that's why they follow the channel because, you know, for one, I explain in detail why I took the trade. You know, um, each one of my trades, and and I have plenty of videos that explain as I explain. I explain each one of my trades, so you can go back and watch those videos, guys. You know. Um, like I said, I'm just a price action trader. I follow what's going on with price, and you know, and that's it. A price action trader. That's all I like to do. I don't like to get all technical with things, adding a bunch of SMAs and EMAs to my chart. Nothing wrong with that. Technical analysis is the way to trade. You know, if you really want to make money, um, I just like looking at the volume profile. I follow price action, look at price patterns, and then I look at the volume profile to once I've marked my zone in my area to see what prices at at that particular area or level and then that's pretty much it uh, every once in a while like i said i look at cumulative delta to kind of just like see what it's you know if there's a lot of buying uh, interest in the market you know uh, where i see 
big green candle to the upside at a area or a zone where I'm interested in taking a trade at. Then I say, oh, there's a lot of buying coming in right here. So, you know. So let's see. Um, just paying attention right now. Okay. And I think one thing that I should show. I'll show you guys this on the, on the 60 minute chart. There was an area. Let's see. Um, okay, no. What's the price broke down? Okay. I'll show you guys this. Uh, right here. Price pushed down, pulled back, and made a lower low right here. Pull back, making a lower low. When price turned back around, it took out structure right here. Broke this area right here. So, um, let's see. Let's actually see what happens. Um, if price pulls back, it could actually pull back. I'm, I'm going to show you. There's an area of demand sitting down here price pulls back to. Okay, I'm going to show it to you. Um, let's see. So eventually, if price could pull back to this area down here, the zone, I'm not saying it's going to happen today or tomorrow, I'm just telling you there's an area of demand down here. So be mindful when price gets it back around the, uh, let's just say the 77 to maybe 67 area. That's, this is a one hour chart now, so that, that's a 10 point gap there. So just be careful, just be mindful of that something will happen when it gets, if price gets back down to this area. Uh, we can push right through it, but there's a demand area here and price could actually bounce from this, okay, before maybe you want to push lower. So it could potentially do something like, uh, pull back to this area, bounce. Um, let me do this right quick. Stay in draw mode. Okay. And then, you know, pull back and then continue to push lower. It could do that. Okay. But I think when price comes back down here, we're going to see that price may, uh, it's probably going to bounce. Okay. At least maybe look for an opportunity for a trade at some point. It could be, it may not happen today. I'm just telling you. So I hope if you guys can hear me on the, the, the uh, my mic, cause I'm actually using the mic for my head, for my headset. So, um, yeah, let me know if it's a little too loud or a little too low or whatever the case may be. Um, but let's go ahead and look at the market now. I'm back here looking at the the market and see if we can see another opportunity. I'm not sure where did I mark this area here. Oh, I just moved the, moved the line down. Um, we are sitting at a lower end of a volume profile right here. So uh, let's see. So the market opened up somewhere around this area around here. So when when price broke above, I'm gonna show you this. Price pushed up, pulled back. It pushed higher, pull back. Let's see. So when price pull, you know, breaks above and pulls back and then pushes higher, you know, on the pullback right here, this is price pulling right back to an area of resistance right here. So it did bounce here, and I said that sometimes price will pull back to the actual area of resistance. What we want to do is see is price pull back down to around this area here, though, around the 27 area, so which is doing right now, and it could bounce here, um, but it could also push lower. So. Price made a swing to the upside. It pulled back. Okay, when it made this high right here. Okay, pulled it rejected up in this area here, and then it retraced, pushed higher, pulled back, pushed higher. So, what's it going to do here? Um, we'll sh we shall see. Um, let's see. Now, I'm, there we go. I'm long at this entry right here at this at this area. And this is me scalping, guys. This is the scalping. Oh, okay. All right. Probably take that area yet. I'm gonna stay in this trade because forty twenty-five. Okay, there we go. Forty thirty twenty-five. Okay. Price clear that area. It did. Come on, push up. Close above. Okay. Ah. Okay. Ah. Okay, here we go. There we go. See? All right, yes, I knew price would come to maybe a little lower. It's going to come up to this area right here, okay? 
All right, and it could possibly push up to this is you know which was you know this here which was support is now resistance. Okay, all right, because it's above us. All right, so um, just scalping along. All right, and I'm up 25 ticks right now. Okay, just scalping along. My commission is 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 barely anything, guys, because you know. Um, when it comes to trading the ES, it's like I told you, it's twelve dollars and fifty cent a tick. So some people have a hard time. Well, why you scalp? You know, for a few points, or just for a point and a half, two points. Sometimes my trades are a lot uh, more than that. But if I can scalp for several points on the ES a day, I'm fine because that's all I need trading the ES. You know, I'm not here to try to get rich. Um, I'm here because I'm not greedy. I'm here to make a profit and then keep it keep it moving. Uh, price is bouncing right at an area of resistance. Okay, you gotta be mindful of that because um, now price could is it pushed down here? It pulled back. All right. So when price pushed up here, pulled back and pushed up higher, what did it do? Now it's pushing lower. Okay. All right. Pull back. Push lower. All right. Taking out this lower here. So what? What could it possibly do? It could pull back to resistance right here and then boom, continue pushing to the downside. All right. That is a possibility. If you need for me to show you that, I'll show you guys. And um, okay, so that's what I was talking about. Price pushes higher, pulls back, pushes higher. This is market structure, guys. Um, then it turns back around, bounces up here at probably some some area of resistance, uh, pushes lower, forms a swing to the downside, breaks lower, taking out this low right here. Price could now pull back, reject, and push lower. Meaning hitting up against this area of resistance. That's how the market likes to move. Okay? And you got to understand that. Got to, got to, got to, got to understand that. Alright? Hopefully that makes sense. I'm a scalper. I said if my style trade is not for you guys, then maybe, you know, hopefully, you know, you find a strategy or something that works for you, whatever the case is. But don't bash somebody because, you know, I've had people come on the channel and it's the craziest thing because people say, they'll come on the channel and say, try to get drop comments on the channel uh to maybe get other people you know other traders to want to take a look at somebody else's content that's fine i have no problem with that whatever 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 it may be um because they may feel like they learn a strategy uh from someone else and it works you know it works for them whatever the case is okay well maybe it does and maybe not but i could guarantee you that 90 percent of the people who actually trade um online are that claim to be so-called gurus Guys, they're either trying to sell you something to get you involved in something, to get you to join a membership. In some kind of way, their end goal is really not to really teach you how to trade correctly, but more so make money on the other end of things. So um, just be careful because there's so many people out there that claim to be trading um, and and trade the right way. I'm not saying that they – I'm just saying there's more people that that are fake them put it out there that are fake and 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 really don't know how to trade correctly then there are real you know i can i can i know i know some people that are real traders that are actually um you know they trade a little different than i do um but they're good traders and a little bit more technical when it comes to they like to follow a little bit more th you know a little bit more uh technical analysis involved in their trading than than i do i'm just very simplistic and i i like to i start off trading price action, pure price action with nothing else. And then that's when I started incorporating volume more so because volume is definitely important in trading. Um, but I could just trade pure price action and, and, and using the profile. You guys see me do it day in, day out, every single day. Okay, so, hey, I'm not here to bash anyone. I'm not here to bash you. If you're dropping comments on the on the channel um, and you're looking to bash someone or, uh, or you know, stay in my opinion or, um, you know, disrespect, you're making comments like that, then... This is not for you then. It may be just not for you. Why? You know, I'm not bashing you. I'm not on your channel. I'm not going to your, your uh, uh, you know, clicking over on your, well, most of you guys probably don't even have, you know, most of those who are say, stating things like that don't even have a YouTube channel. They're not, they're, they're not even um, trying to, to, to help. They're just, they're spamming is what they're really doing. I call it trolling or whatever the case is. Don't, don't, that's, hey, I can't stop people from doing things, right? But it's just, is grow a heart, you know, really, you know, really don't do things like that. You know, it's just crazy that people, what, what you must not have nothing else to do in life. <laughs> Be honest with you. Nothing else to do in life. 
Um, so, like I said, everybody's trading style is different. You know, don't bash someone or state, in my opinion, um, your trading style doesn't match up to my trading style. Man, hey, it may not. You know, you may totally trade differently. God knows. There's so many strategies out there that people trade. There's so many different things that people look at when trading. You know, do I need all these EMAs and SMAs in my chart to trade? No, I do not. No, I do not. Because you know why? It's good to follow. You know, you can follow SMAs and EMAs and things like that. But I've always said this a long time ago. I did a video on it. Um, indicators are lagging. Okay? Indicators are lagging. What's not lagging is price. Okay? Indicators are lagging. So, you may get into a trade. You're taking a play off of, of, of off of a, you know, an indicator, whatever the case is. And by the time, that trade may come back against you because, you know, that indicator may shift. And you're taking a bounce off of the off of, off of EMA or SMA to stay in the trend, whatever the case is, and then it, that 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 indicator shifts or whatever the case is, changes its direction, and then the our market is against you. Okay, so just be just be smart in how you trade is all I'm trying to say. Um, you know, if you the best way to really trade is pure understanding, pure price action, nothing. And I will tell you this time and time again, um, trade nothing but a naked chart to start. Nothing but a naked chart. If you can trade nothing but a naked chart, fall on price movement, price action, looking for those patterns, looking, understanding first and foremost market structure. Okay. Once you understand market structure and how the market's moving, what it's doing, and um, fall on price action is the next thing to being able to um, trade price accordingly. You know, as price is breaking structure, pulling back, um, we're tracing to an area where price may have broke structure to the upside or broke structure to the downside, and you get that pullback. You're looking for the rejection, then you get into the trade. So I like to keep my stuff simplistic, guys. That's all I'm saying. All right, let's see what price is doing here. Um, enough ranting because I could go on for days with that. But uh, keep your comments to yourself. You know, when it comes to negative stuff, if you if you if you're a negative person. Keep your comments to yourself. Nobody, nobody want. No, hey, we're positive people here in this channel. Nobody wants negativity, really. Keep it moving if this is not for you. Basically, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Let's see, because you won't find me going over to your channel or going over to your, you know, whatever, leaving negative comments. That is not for me. I'm a bigger person than that. Alrighty, let's see here what we got going on. All right, so we see what price did, right? It um, it did, it it pulled back to this area of resistance right here, turned back around. What did I say? It probably pushed lower, and it did. It pushed lower. So I'm just trading, um, you know, just small areas to where I could scalp and make a profit from, picking up a couple points. Got into the trade here, you know, pick up a couple points. So. All right, price is bouncing here. Um, let's see. Honestly, I like to see price maybe. Let me take a look here. Hmm. Okay, so at this point, price is actually in a wedge, um, moving sideways. Uh, let's see, I mean, it's, you know, high here, and it can't, it so far is not breaking its low. So we're moving side, we're in a wedge here, building volume in this area. All right. I'm going long, I'm going short. Yes, I am. Come on, there we go. Quick little short, okay? Just down to this area right here, okay? Price rejected this swing high, this little high right here. Top into the high volume area right here. Took it the moment candle, this red candle closed short. Just I knew price would react when it got down here to 23. All right, quick little short. And that's probably just another seven or eight ticks. Let's see. Um, 
Actually, six. Yeah. Had, yeah, so we were just out 31 ticks. Okay, Scott alone. You know? Um, yeah, show you my trades. I mean, no losing trades. No losing trades. See? Short, long, short, no losing trades, no slippage, no loss ticks. You know, I'm not saying that I, I trade perfect every day. No, I don't. You know, I mean that I'm, I profit every day, but I just don't. I, you know, I may have a, a few ticks lost, whatever the case is, or even if I take a losing, have a losing trade, then I'm back into the market again. You know, when I see another setup to make up the difference, whatever the case is, that's just trading, guys. But my, 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 the end goal is every single day, the goal is to be profitable in the green every day. You know, if you want to look at it from a standpoint of how many points I've done, made today, almost eight points, okay? Trading the ES. All right, simple as that. Okay, I'm just scalping away. It all ends up and it all uh, accumulates at the end of the week, and that's the way you do it. So, you know, I don't um, trade the um, the Nasdaq or the Dow. From time to time, I look at them. Um, have I traded before? Yeah, I've traded them before. I just like trading the ES because the tick value. It's just rewarding, more rewarding for me. So, I've taken. Um, let's see here. One. Two, taking three trades, okay, and I'm up eight points, so, um, now the NASDAQ, it moves a lot, it's a lot fluid, so you could actually, you know, profit, um, it would look like you could profit more points, so eight points on the ES, you know, if you look at the NASDAQ, that could be, I don't know, it could be 15, 20 points, whatever the case is, because it, it moves, you know, it moves, the ES, the ES does, does not move like that, all right, see, that solid, that solid, um, solid, um, short that I take, I took price pulled right back above the high volume area to this little area here, a little swing. Saw the rejection because price was forming swings to the downside, making lower highs and lower lows. Pull back above the high volume area. Saw the rejection. I went short down back down to this area right here. I know price is gonna bounce. What did it do when it got back down to this area? It bounced. It reacted. Okay. So you trade the way that works best for you. Is all I'm saying. Uh, I trade my way, and my way I make money every day. All right, so if price, um, we got a low right here, right? Price breaks is low, okay? Not 100% know if it will or not, but if it does, it could tank from here and move down from, so basically moving from uh, 4308 area back down here to 43, that'd be eight point move right there pretty much. If it can tank, tank that area, break that area, it, it'd probably it'd test this area more likely down here. We have support right here and you have low volume area. You have an area low volume, okay? All right, so um, not saying it's going to break this area, but it could, and if it does, it'll push. It could push lower, and that's why I mentioned that area off of the 60-minute chart here. You can see it here in the 60-minute. You know, price breaking that that 4308 area, come down, test this red line, but then you have supply sitting there here too, around uh, the 75, somewhere between the in this area here where I have it marked off at the rectangle-wise. So, um, yeah, that's an area. Not supply, excuse me, guys. Demand, uh, demand, not supply. Okay, so let's take a look to see. So right now, I mentioned we're in a wedge. Price is not breaking a low. It's not taking out a high. We have a leg to the downside. Okay, leg to the downside right here. Okay. Now let's see if price is going to reject lower in this high volume area and then push back up and hopefully it may take out this high today. Okay, so the high today is sitting up here at 43.58. All right, and the low for today, where are we at? Yeah, low is way down here um, at 42.50. Okay, so so far today price has moved from 42.50, which it must have came down here and bounced off that 50 area, that 50 um, level, and it's pushed already back up to. Is that right? Oh, 4250 to 4360. So, price on the ES ES has moved 100 and, you know, 110 points almost today. Okay, so let's see if I can get in. See if I can get in one more trade today. Call it call it a day. <clears throat> see how sluggish the ES is. And that's because we are, it's 11.15 right now. I typically like to trade. I do not trade right at 9.30. I like to get into the market and trade. Um, 
or, you know, start trading around about somewhere between 9.50 and 10 o'clock, guys. I get the market a good 15, 20 minutes before I start, you know, really uh, looking for entries. Not so much, you know, I mark my levels and mark zones, but really more so looking for um, taking entries, I should say. Okay. Hmm. Let's blow this up a little bit. And this is the area you see a price rejected from right here, right? Um, around, right at the opening pretty much, around about five minutes after the opening this morning, price pushed up, taking out little structures right here to the upside, then it pulled back, right? All right, so it bounced in this area. Now price is pulling back to this area, and, okay. Um, Gracious, let's see. Yeah. Mm -mm, let's see. Yeah, I don't. Yep. I'm trying to see what price is going to do here. To be honest with you. Did it break that area there? It did. It broke. 18 and a half so going for a stab long Twenty fifty. come on Go ahead. There we go. Quick little scalp right there. All right. I knew price would bounce. Reject this area here. Why? I'll explain it to you. I'm a scalper, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay? Simple as this. Um, I'm, I'm taking what I can get and looking at the opportunities because, like I said, look at the range of what ES has done since opening. It just did this right here. It made a high and pulled it back. Okay? That's it. Pulling back to the low of this swing to the upside okay it pulled back all right so um this trade right here was based on price pushing up here pulling back okay on the pullback okay so it made a high right here okay price pushed up okay as price pushed up here um pull back it made a little swing pushed higher taking out this little swing right here to the upside so basically when price pulls back to that area and I see price break back above, being we're at the lower end of the high volume area, I see price break right back above 18 and a half and I'm just scalping just for back up to at least the 2021 area, 20 and a half, 21 area. Just scalp for a few ticks. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying the price is going to continue pushing higher. I just scalp based on what I saw at that moment. Trading is all about trading what you see happening, okay? So I'm just scalping real quick, and you saw me put my well, I put my profit target in at because I knew price would, you know, bounce at exactly exactly where I put my profit target at, right? Okay. So I'm up 37 ticks now, and let's see. Oops. So that brings it from seven and a qu uh, three quarters to nine and a quarter points now. Okay, just scalping. That's all I'm doing. Okay. And right now, uh, let's go back. Take a look here. Show it to you. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll have to show you guys the actual tick value and the, the, the trades and whatever it is. Anyways, let's take a look. Here we are. No losses. Okay? All right? Simple as that. Just be confident. Be patient. Be confident in how you trade. And that's what I'm doing here. All right. So, let's see something here. Up, 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 up. Um, man, I missed the... Um, okay, this is where price projected. You see price pull back to this area right here, right below this high volume area. It rejected 
this area when it pulled back right here from 940 this morning. So there is a possibility that price could actually push up right here. And I'm long. Okay. Come on. Okay, price can come a little lower if we're pushing higher. Long a little early on this trade, to be honest with you. Ah. Uh. I think I might take this out because I don't like what I'm seeing here. Come on. Okay, so I'll get out the trade, right? See? So, break even there. Don't lose, I'm not losing anything. Um, price can push a little lower. Possibly testing this area here right at um, 11 and three quarters. There it goes at 12 and a half. Okay, so uh, let's see. Let me switch over to take a look at the four range. Actually, let me do this. I need to mark that area I'm, I'm, I'm looking at. Let's mark this area right here. Okay, I'm looking at my full range now. Um, yeah. Okay, so price. Yeah, price is coming down here at eleven and a half and stay above eleven and a half. I'll be interested. Maybe it depends what what what, what the market looks like. Um, okay, see it hitting it. It's one. Maybe there it is. It's rejecting it. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Ah. Okay, I'm in. Come on. Hmm. See, I'm taking a trade at the upper end. It's right at the high volume area. It needs to happen down here at the, at the lower end. So, all right. There we go. Scale in one contract just to cover my trade. Okay. Come on. Ah. Scalping just trying to get out this get out this little trade I'm in for a few ticks. What's up? There we go. Ah, why does it keep there we go? Okay, we got a field. Uh if price breaks above this area, it's, it's more likely gonna come up here to well let's see here. Oh, 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 nope. It could come up to around 17 and a half, maybe 18. But see it rotating like this right here. Uh, pushing and pulling. I don't like that. So I, I go ahead and get out the trade um, while I can. So let's see. What happened on that trade there? Didn't lose anything. I broke even on one trade. And I'm up 47 ticks now. I'll show you. Okay, up 47 ticks, didn't lose anything, I broke even, I got myself out of the trade, a little, you know, iffy trade there, but I was able to get out, where are we at now, 
17. I said price will at least probably come to 17 and a, and a half or, or 18. Look at it. All right. Let's see what it does. Um, oops. So, point wise, I'm up uh, almost 12 points on the ES today, trading the. See? Okay. Just scalping along. Scalping along. I've taken. I've taken. Let's see here. One. Two, three, four, five, I don't know, I think six trades. So six little small trades, scalping, because the market is just doing exactly what I showed you the ES does. It pull, pushes, pulls. You know, it just, it, 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 it has tighter swings. Tight, it has tighter movements than, than, than like the, the NASDAQ or the Dow, um, which I like to trade in it because I can scalp and do just as well trading the ES than, you know, trading the NASDAQ. I uh, say so there it goes. See what did I say? Um, came back a little higher, like 19, 18, and three quarters, something like that. So I knew it was going to bounce down here when I saw the uh, rejection here, uh, but it was kind of just piddling around, pushing, pushing and pulling. When the price is that, excuse me, I go ahead and get out. If it's not moving, as soon as I get in, I'm getting out. I'm gonna find my exit point and get out, or use a strategy to get out. Okay. So, all right, up almost 12 points today on the ES. And I think I'm going to wrap it up, guys. I uh, appreciate everyone who's been following and watching the channel. Um, hope you found some value in this content today or just watching me trade. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, that's all I have for you today. I'll see you in tomorrow's video. If you're trading, please be safe in the market. Uh, I know there's a lot going on in the media, whatever the case is. Um, I'm not a stickler to, to be, you know, watching the, the news all day long. Um, I pay attention to it, you know. Look at it from time to time, but I really like to pay more attention to what's going on on the economic calendar. So, with that said, I'm going to close the video out. Wishing everyone a successful day. Take care.